Hello there, in this video we're going to be solving the following problem involving how to solve or how to find a tangent line. So find an equation of the tangent line to the curve, all of that, at the point 1, 2. Now the first thing we want to do is uh, find, well we have to write, we have to know the actual, the line equation, which is y subtract y1, the first y value, is going to be equal to the slope m multiply x, subtract the first uh, x value, x1. So this is the equation of a line. And now, I'll, whenever you ask these types of questions, you th the only thing you really want to do is find the m value. And to do this, for this specific question, because notice the function where we have right here, it involves both x variables and y variables. That tells me it's going to be an implicit uh, function. We have to do some implicit differentiation to actually uh, find the slope of the tangent line. So let me just write out the actual function we're dealing with here, which is, and we're, we have a point one two there, but that'll come into play a bit later. So now the first thing we want to do, or the next thing maybe, is find the derivative of all of this. So the, de the derivative of x cubed is going to be, uh, oops, 3x squared add and to find the derivative of this particular term or factor, no term, you want to use the product rule uh, for differentiation, which is as follows. I'll just switch colors. So it's going to be you find the derivative of the f area, multiply it by g, and you add it to the derivative of g multiply f. So this is the product rule. So in this particular um, instance, uh, x squared is going to be our f, so we want to take the derivative of that x squared is going to give us a 2x. Uh, now we leave the g alone. g is going to be the y in this uh, this little term here. So we, we just put a y here. Then we add it, according to the product rule, we add it to the derivative of g. So what's the derivative of y? Well, that's just going to be a 1. But because we're trying to do everything in terms of x, we have to add a, a dy dx here. Normally, it's going to be 1 multiply the dy dx, but since 1 is just 1, we don't really count it, and it's just a dy dx there. Uh, so what else do we do? Well, we multiply it by, according to the product rule, f, and f in this case is x squared, so we just tag on an x squared right there. And we're done finding the differentiation, or the derivative of that one term. So moving on to this one, what is the derivative of y squared? Well, that's going to give me a 2y. But because we're taking the derivative again of a y, ter a y variable, and we want it in terms of x, we have to tag on a dy over dx right here. And then, well, what's the, de what's the derivative of a constant? That's going to be 0, so sub subtract 0, or just nothing. Okay, so this is our derivative, kind of, so far, but we can't use it in this form. What we need to do is actually solve it for dy dx. And you're going to find that whenever you're trying to solve these problems and it involves more than one variable, the thing you're actually solving for is dy dx. After you do that, you um, follow the same steps as you're, you're usually used to. So if I were to do that, I would factor out a dy dx from one, of, uh, from one side here, from this term here and this one, leaving me with an x squared, then plus 2y. And I'll put these two terms over here onto the right hand side, that would give me a negative 3x squared, positive, or sorry, negative uh, 2xy. And now if I divide everything by this term right here, I should have isolated dy dx. So I'll have x squared add 2y. And let me just erase this portion right here. Now all of that there is going to be equal to my dy dx, which is what exactly what we want. And now that we know this, uh, normally the next step is to take the limit of this right here, the derivative, uh, as x approaches the first x value, value, but you'd also have to do that for the y value. Uh, the more, the most, uh, most convenient way of doing the next step is just to plug in your two values of the points you have right here, the 1 and the 2. So we know that we, our point has an x value of 1, right? So we just put a 1 in for there, and it'll become negative 3, then 1 squared equals 2, 1. Then the y value, we can see, is not going to be a 2 at that point. Put a 2 inside there. Divide it by, of 
course, 1 squared. And we're really, we're just plugging everything in at this point. And this is going to equal some number for our dy dx value. And more specifically, it's going to equal the slope. So what is this value? Well, this is a 1. This is a 4. That's going to give me a 5 at the denominator. At the top, we have a negative 3. We have a, looks like a negative 4 over there, giving me a negative 7 overall. So negative 7 over 5 is going to be my slope. But we're not quite done yet. We Now that we found a slope through all, all of that mess, uh, I think I'm going to erase some of it to make myself some more room. So the very last step is just to, it's really a formality or, well not quite, but somewhat. Uh, this is where the equation of the line comes into play. We have to do y, subtract, what's the first y value? Well that's a 2. Then it's equal to the m value, now that's what we just found out. The m value is going to be negative 7 over 5. Multiply it by, uh, it looks like x, subtract the first x value, which is 1. And this is the equation of a line. And this is one of the more harder ones because it ins mostly involves uh, implicit different, excuse me, implicit differentiation. Uh, normally these ones are easy because you're dealing with one variable like x. But this is how you would solve it when you're dealing with two. I hope you enjoyed and that you're having a fantastic day.